Today I'm going to continue with the Complex Numbers, the Biggest Blender series um, with a little discussion about Eric Dollard's Verser Algebra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the 2x2 two two, uh, matrix version of Complex Numbers to Eric Dollard's Verser Algebra. So in order to convert um, Eric Dollard's Verser Algebra to the 2x2 two two matrix format, we need to um, understand uh, these four 2x2 two two matrices. Now these, I refer to these, Eric Dollard refers to them as coefficients and I refer to them as identities. Um, this is, uh, these 2x2 two two matrices are functionally identical to uh, what Eric Dollard is calling, is calling a coefficient. And so um, this is a 2x2 two two matrix. This is a 2x2 two two matrix. So you've got a forward diagonal and a backward diagonal, forward diagonal, back, backward diagonal, forward diagonal, backward, forward, backward. Okay, so I'm going to go through each one of these and I'm going to tell you what it is. So this 2x2 two two matrix here corresponds to the number 1, plus 1. Okay, so this is the two-dimensional version of the one-dimensional plus one. Only you have plus one on in two locations in the matrix and they both have the same sense. Okay, so this here, this is minus one. Okay, so minus one has a negative one on um, in each element of the forward diagonal. Okay, and both of these identities have zero <clears throat> in the backward diagonal. So these are what we would call real identities or real numbers. So um, this matrix here is positive 1. This matrix here is negative 1. Okay, so now we're going to go to the ones over here. And uh, so now we have the ones on the backward diagonal in both cases. Um, and in both cases, uh, if one is positive, the other one is negative. If this one's negative, then the other one is positive. These are called complex conjugates. These two identities are complex conjugates of each other. So that is the legacy um, language uses that term complex conjugate. Okay, so when you hear the complex conjugate, all you have to do is flip the this to a positive and this to a negative or this to a positive and this to a negative okay so these are um, complex conjugates of each other and these two uh, identities are actually uh, negative inverses of each other they are inverses of each other so negative this is this and negative this is this okay positive this is this and positive this is this so these are um, inverses of each other. If you inverse this, you get this. If you inverse this, you get this. If you conjugate this, you get this. If you conjugate this, you get this. And so this is the, these are the complex co um, identities in a nutshell, and these are the only ones, okay? So uh, uh, in order for it to be a complex number, these are the only ones we need. These are the only ones that satisfy the rules of complex numbers. Okay, complex numbers have rules. So if you put a positive here and a negative here, it is not going to be a complex number. And if you put a positive here and a positive here, it is not going to be a complex number. It's going to be some other number, but um, I am trying to uh, figure out how nature works, and I believe that this is all I need in order to understand nature. Okay, so this is 1 minus 1 i and minus i okay so uh, when you have a pause it's it, this is my convention okay this is the convention i came up with it's arbitrary because these are complex conjugates of each other it is arbitrary uh, which one you call positive and which one you call negative and so i choose to call this one positive okay because the positive is here so this is positive i and this is negative i. Negative i is the complex conjugate. These two are flipped, right? Positive and negative are flipped. These are the complex conjugates of each other. 
Okay, so this is i, this is minus i, this is 1, and this is minus 1, and these are the identities of the two-dimensional numbers that we uh, commonly refer to as complex numbers. So what I'm going to do to test these identities is I'm going to a, apply a, uh, an operation on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square each one of these matrices to see if I get the right answer. Okay, so when you square the positive on the forward diagonal 2 by 2 matrix, you get back the positive on the forward diagonal um, identity matrix. This is called the identity matrix. So when you square the identity matrix, you get the identity matrix. So this makes sense. When you square 1, you get 1. Now what happens when you square minus 1? When you square minus 1, you in the real numbers, you also get 1. And so in two-dimensional numbers, or one-dimensional numbers, you square minus 1 and you get 1. In the two-dimensional numbers, when you square minus 1, you also get 1. Okay, so this um, this satisfies, you know, the, the rules that we expect a number system to have, whether they be one-dimensional numbers or two-dimensional numbers. And so now we're going to do the imaginary component. Okay, so this is I in legacy language. So this matrix here, when you square it, so when I squared in the, in the standard language, legacy language, I squared equals minus 1. So when you square this, when you take this matrix and you square it, then you get minus 1 on the forward diagonal. This is the minus 1 that I show over here. This is what we call minus 1 um, in two dimensions. Okay, so um, this, uh, this is i and this is minus i. This is the complex conjugate of this. When you square this 2 by 2 matrix, you also get minus 1. Okay, so when you square i, you get minus 1, and when you square minus i, you also get minus 1. And so this satisfies the um, normal math that you would associate with one-dimensional, or sorry, with the square root of negative 1 uh, version of i. Okay, so I'm going to put it all together. So this is the real numbers. When you square um, 1, you get 1, and when you square minus 1, you get 1. And when you square i, you get minus 1. And when you square minus i, you also get minus 1. Okay, so this, uh, you know, seems to be working in terms of a number system that it closely resembles the one-dimensional numbers, only they are two-dimensional numbers. So now we have all the tools we need to understand Eric Dollard's Verser algebra. Okay, so here... Um, he does something a little different um, in terms of the way he lays things out, and it makes sense. So uh, what he does is he, um, he has sort of a sequence going on here, and he goes from plus 1 to plus i to minus 1 to minus i, and then he, um, I, and he cycles back through to plus 1. And so, um, so if you take... Um, I, so I by I, we, we're actually talking about this guy here, okay, when you take I, well, you know, like, any number to the power of 0 is 1, so I to the power of 0 is 1, I to the power of 1, of course, is I, positive I, I squared is equal to minus 1 by definition, and I cubed is equal to minus I. Okay, so this is, and then he cycles through. So, um, so plus one in my language in the two by two matrix format is this guy here. Plus i is this guy here. Minus one is this guy here, and minus i is this guy here. Okay, and so um, if you do the math, if you figure it, because I showed you how to square each number, so 1 squared equals 1, minus 1 squared equals um, 1, uh, i squared equals minus 1, and minus i squared equals minus 1. So we can go through each one. Of course, i to the 0 is 1, and that's how we represent 1. OK, 
Okay, i to the 1 is equal to i, and this is how we represent i. i squared is equal to minus 1, and this is how we represent minus 1. Okay, i cubed is equal to minus i, and minus i is the complex conjugate of i, and um, that is how you write minus i. So, uh, so what Eric Dollar does is he starts from the perspective of i, which is really interesting. He takes i and takes it to the power of 2 and gets, or the power of 0 and gets 1, and then to the power of 1 and gets i, well, you know, I, anything to the power of 1 is itself. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so those are trivial. But then i squared equals minus 1 in the legacy language, which is this in my 2x2 um, two two matrix format. And then i cubed is equal to that, but then i to the power of 4 is equal to 1. i to the power of 5 is equal to i. i to the power of 6 is equal to minus 1. And i to the power of 7 is equal to uh, minus i. And then he would go, you know, it would cycle through. So this is how i would represent, um, this is the interpretation, not the interpretation, but this is the uh, proper way to fully uh, show all my work as a mathematician. Um, this, using the 2x2 two two matrix format, um, verifies what Eric Dollar is saying because um, it actually matches what you would get when you perform these operations on uh, these matrices. And so if I took this matrix and cubed it, okay, sorry, if I took uh, I and cubed it, I would get this for an answer. Okay, and if I took I and I squared it, uh, this is what I'm going to get for an answer. I squared is equal to that. I cubed is equal to that. And this is I right here. The backward diagonal of a 2x2 two two matrix with a positive 1 in the upper quadrant and a negative 1 in the um, lower left quadrant. So this was just a review, uh, and what I'm hoping is that with uh, this will give you a little bit more understanding when you go back and watch uh, this video that I made um, of the generalized uh, electric wave by Eric Dollard. Okay, so I actually had already done this in the past where I took Eric Dollard's um, Versor Algebra and, and the language he uses in this, in this paper and I um, converted it to complex numbers. So uh, hopefully with a little bit of a review here and maybe a little more detail as to how I came to understand Eric Dollard's approach to um, Versor Algebra and how I was able to convert it to, okay, mod what I call modified complex numbers. Modified complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers and so when you convert, so what I'm trying to do is go through all the different um, places where complex numbers are used and replace the language with this language um, for clarity and to disambiguate the language a little bit. And so if we do the same thing everywhere, then maybe we'll be able to sift through all of the um, sort of language problems and the confusions with the terms real and imaginary and oh well real numbers aren't real so we have to get rid of them and throw the baby out with the bathwater which is what we I believe we've been doing for the last hundred years because of an improper understanding of complex numbers simply as two-dimensional numbers. Okay, this is, you don't get, can't get any simpler than that. Complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers simply, okay? The only, you know, complication is they have certain rules. And the rules are that the forward diagonal have the same sense and the backward diagonal has the opposite sense. That's the only rules for complex and other uh, numbers. Otherwise, they are just quite simply two-dimensional numbers. And, uh, and they follow the rules of one-dimensional numbers. So 1 squared is equal to 1, and minus 1 squared is equal to 1. Of course, one-dimensional numbers don't have a backward diagonal, so they one-dimensional numbers can't have imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers can only exist when we expand our mind to two-dimensional numbers. Okay, so 
I hope this helps. I hope this helps and uh, I'm going to keep looking for places where I can apply this and simplify, uh, simplify the language down to, you know, first principles. So great. Have a good night.